you know, he filed a new 13D, but the options purchases that seem to be cited in part as fuel for the rise were not we're new. Not. We're not. They were old. They were not. And there was no reason for him to really file a new D. I don't, still don't understand no it, although understand. they did seem to include another 2% in his ownership stake as a result of perhaps the option position, even though it was out of the money. Jim... It's very possible, and I haven't heard from J.P. Morgan, which we've, you know, we've heard is that was looking to do the sale. It's possible he's out already. Yeah. It's possible he sold all his options. By the way, I'm not sure he has to file on the options at all. So we wouldn't know. Why wouldn't you? And shouldn't this be something at least that the SEC takes okay. a look at? All right. So if I were Chairman Gensler or the head of enforcement at the agency, I would call the counsel of Bed Bath Beyond and ask if you gave approval for the sale of an insider stock. He has three people on the board, uh, which would be certainly deemed within uh, his fear. So what you would say is, did you really file to sell or sell stock when you had material non-public information, which you certainly had because you your people are on the board this very morning? Uh, Bed Bath files a, a regulation FD saying that we're pleased to have reached a constructive agreement with RC Ventures uh, and are committed to maximizing value for all shareholders. It goes on to also say that they've expeditiously hired, working expeditiously with advisors, external financial advisors, and lenders, okay, because they have credit problems, uh, they have creditors, uh, on strengthening our balance sheet. Okay, so what I've been urging every single day is that they sell stock, but you would have to you'd have to disclose how the company's doing at the same time. Uh, this would indicate that the company wants to sell stock. Would they really let a director sell stock ahead? Well, he is is he wait is, he's a director? No, no his group, not. His he's group not on the board. Right, he's right. not on the board. He's not on the board. He's got three people he put on the board. Right. But he, he David, was involved, obviously. Yes, as you so out. so that as was another activist. Well, there's right. uh, Miss John, John Duskin, Duskin. Not, not involved now that I understand. But what's right. interesting is, okay, so you see this filing first yes. by Ryan Cohen, who has three, who placed three people on the board. And then the company comes out and says that they are working expeditionally to strengthen the balance sheet. You can either strengthen it with debt, which would be foolhardy because they already have a lot of debt. They don't have or a lot strengthen of cash it with flow. equity and take, right, strengthen it with equity by, uh, by taking for, advantage of this right. now, uh, surprising surge. Right. In so the let's go back to the SEC. It, now, I want to be very careful about this, but I would ask them to cooperate with an inquiry to find out how this all happened and Ryan Cohen's involvement. If they are at all forthcoming, then I would issue a subpoena to Ryan Cohen saying I want all documents between you and the three members on the board that you put on. And I want to know if you have any material non-public information about how the companies do it. Perhaps he doesn't. I find that would be highly unusual, given the fact he put three people on the board. But the SEC yeah, should be calling Ryan Cohen to come on with us. Has he ever come on? I mean, oh, I've asked him. Peter. He was the founder of Chewy, right? Well, so that's co-founder. Co-founder. And, and by the way, when you speak to the then Chewy he, people, they do not say anything about him. Okay. They, they would I mean, not I know even very go as far as acknowledging. I know very that little he's a about him. Obviously, he's somebody you'd want to talk to. I have not spoken to him. I don't know the guy. Um, yeah. He was at the heart of the GameStop. Yes. Um, meme craze, right. and obviously he's also but, made potentially an enormous amount of money here. I mean, again, oh, you got a back in triple. February and March, he bought what was uh, calls it uh, strike at 60, 75, and 80 right. various sizes. I think 60 was the largest. That makes it's an unhedgeable position, technically unhedgeable. Right. So and, you can really and, get short. I mean, going. by the way, those have gone up enormously in value yes. uh, since the bottom in the stock. Now, by the way, the stock was higher when he bought them. Don't forget, he bought them in that January, you know, end, uh, end of, uh, when was it? Sorry, uh, February time frame, uh, March. But nonetheless, most likely uh, did fairly well. And then his, uh, his own position of 9.45 million shares, right. which very well could also be out at this but point. But again, I mean, what's really important here is if you're uh, the agency, you would have to say, I need to know everything about this. And I need to know it right now. Because you cannot sell or even file to sell if you have material non-public information. Right. So you'd want to know that. But what you know? What about the larger context here, Jim? Of you were talking about this yesterday of the chat rooms of coordination. Um, 
which we've also talked about when this began first, the meme craze itself back in early 21. Right. What about uh, that and the SEC taking a look um, at that? If I were, um, again, in the enforcement division, I would call in the ringleaders of the chats that, that uh, tried to goose the stock and break the shorts. But you know what? They could easily say, hey, people come on our air all the time and try to get stocks higher. Um, and that's fine. What's the difference? And they're not trying to drive a stock lower. It's not, right. a you know. But at the same time, the SEC should be on top of this rather than three months from now examining what's going on.